It's reverse engineering time again and today we're going to figure out how to make this animation which was suggested by Muhammad. And I have to thank you for this tasty motion snack. I'm not sure if you wanted this whole animation reverse engineered but the last scene is where the magic is so I'm going to focus there. I've seen animations similar to this and I've been very curious about how they were done so I can't wait to dig in. So let's get into Illustrator. And one thing I've learned over the years is to start in grayscale, especially when testing ideas. So I made this quick and dirty illustration that I could use to begin experimenting as soon as possible. So looking at this dope shit over and over, my instinct was telling me that the warp effect was involved, but this is a much more complex use than I've ever seen before. So first I had to look at the Pahans project to see if there were any clues. There were no clues. But I did find this similar animation and it looked a bit simpler. So I thought, let's try this out first to get a feel for the technique because looking at this frame, that has to be a warp effect set to bulge. I know a good bulge when I see one. So inside After Effects, I brought in our quick and dirty illustration and I separated its position dimensions and animated its X position from one side to the other. Then I added a new keyframe towards the end of the animation and dragged that to the middle. I added an easy ease and then changed the value graph to something like this so that it would ease in and then quickly animate on before slowing down towards the end without completely stopping in the middle. Then I filled in the gap at the end by putting a duplicate without any animation below this layer and parented that to the first layer. And that gives us this. Then I pre-composed these two layers because the warp effect works much better when it's applied to a pre-comp. And now we can get to the magic. So let's drop in a warp and change it to bulge and by increasing the bend you'll see we're starting to get what we're looking for. So if we set our bend to 20 and then break the link on our scale property and change the Y scale to 90 we get the first part of this animation. So let's drop in keyframes for the bend and scale. And now we need to recreate this frame here and I did a bunch of experimenting to figure this out but what I ended up doing was adding another warp effect that was set to fish because as you can see if we mess around with the bend we're getting close to what we're looking for from our reference. Bulge and fish warps. Interesting that those are the two we ended up with. Reminds me of some scenes from Simon Landrian's work. Just amazing. Where would we be without his exquisite contributions to the world of animation? Chef's kiss. Anyway, let's finalize these keyframes. Now, at the start of the animation, we want our fish warp to be zero, so let's drop in keyframes for the bend, but also the horizontal distortion, and you'll see why later. So let's move forward and change the bend on our fish warp to eight, the horizontal distortion to negative eight, and the reason we're adding this is because it creates a bit more of a rolling effect as if the bulge were moving to the left. Lastly, let's change the bulge to 8 as well. Now let's move forward in the timeline again and drop in keyframes for everything, including the scale property. Now we just need to set everything to 0, relink our scale property and scale down our comp. Now let's select our first and last keyframes and add a 60% ease to either side. Then with our middle keyframes selected, let's control click them to turn them into auto bezier keyframes. And this is the result. And you can imagine if we masked this like the reference, we would have something very similar. So we're definitely onto something here and I believe we can apply what we've learned to the more complicated version. So let's do that. But first, remember to like this video if you also appreciate a good bulge and share it with any other bulge and fish enthusiasts. Now with the next version there is a lot going on so in order to figure this out I decided to break up the animation into key poses and animate using a pose to pose method. These are the poses I identified and the idea is to create each frame using a combination of the two warps and the scale property. While we figure this out we're going to start with the same grayscale pre-comp but with this one the shapes come in quickly from the left and then continue without stopping. So an easy way to achieve that is to start off with a linear animation like this and then at about one second, drop in a keyframe and change that to an auto bezier by holding control and clicking on it. Then we can shift that over to the left and you can see it animates in faster. We can even enhance this by going into the speed graph and increasing the influence on the left and that gives us a really nice result. The final change I made to this pre-comp is to open the comp settings with control K and then in the advanced tab, set the anchor point to the left and then I went back to increase the comp width to 2600. Using the anchor makes sure that the pre-comp keeps its left alignment in the main comp. 
Now we can add in two warp effects, the first set to bulge and the second to fish and for now we can set them both to zero. I spent some time figuring out the timing between each pose but now I'll just drop in some markers to help guide us. Let's start at the second frame because it's very similar to the first and we can begin by dropping in keyframes for all the properties we want to animate. This includes the usual warp keyframes from before but also the scale property with a broken link and you'll see why in a bit. So let's look at our second frame reference and match it. And the way I achieved this was to set the fish bend to negative four, the horizontal distortion to 10 and the bulge bend to 12. For now, we can leave the scale as is. The next thing we're gonna do is click here and select new comp viewer. And now if we go into our pre comp, we can still see what's happening in our main comp. So firstly, let's change the anchor point of this first layer to the right and then scale it down until we get closer to our reference frame, something like that. And while we're here, it's a good idea to duplicate our bottom layer again and move it over so that we fill in the gap to make creating these poses a bit easier. Now we can go back and close our second view and that is our second pose done. For the first pose, we can copy and paste the second bend frames over and then change the bulge bend to five, the fish bend to negative 10 and the horizontal distortion to 20 and we get this nice exaggerated warp that feels a bit like it's animating in three dimensions. Now for our third pose it's just a simple bulge warp like we've seen before so let's drop in keyframes and set our fish warp values to zero and then we can increase our Y scale to match our reference. Then for our fourth pose, let's drop in keyframes for everything again. Let's change our horizontal distortion to negative 25, decrease our bulge slightly to seven, and then decrease our Y scale a couple notches, and that should be good enough. Now for our final pose, let's just move a few frames ahead for this one so we can make this pose properly because we are losing information, as you can see. Let's drop in keyframes for everything and then add in a position keyframe for this pose, as well as the fourth pose. Firstly, let's change our bulge bend to 10, our fish bend to 10 as well, our horizontal distortion to negative 60, and our Y scale to 70. Then we can just move our whole comp over to the left to finish off this pose. Let's drag our final keyframes over to the end of the animation. And now we have all our key poses done. All we need to do is finalize our easing. So let's select all our keyframes and change them to auto Bezier keyframes by holding control and clicking on them. Then we just need to select our position keyframe on pose four and give it a 60% ease out. And then for our scale keyframe, let's go into the graph editor and increase the influence like this. And this is what we get. Then to create these cutaways from our reference, I just used four masks set to subtract on the right edge of our composition. Now to finalize this is simple. We just need to replace the grayscale placeholder and for that I created this new artwork in Illustrator and then I brought that into After Effects line by line. Then I parented them to our original grayscale layer and made sure they start in the same position as the original. If you're recreating this, you would need to scale up your original to 100% first, then parent your new layers and scale back down again. Then we can hide all the grayscale layers. And lastly, I also added individual position animations to the new layers so that some are moving forward and some are moving backward to add some more complexity to the overall animation. And this is our final animation. Hit subscribe if you enjoyed this breakdown of another pro animation. And if you want more, check out this playlist.